you know, I had a unique relationship with my grandmother. Most kids, when they're growing up, want to hang out with people their own age, which makes sense, or, um, you know, do normal things like play football and eat pizza and whatever. For me, a fun evening would be going to the Bel Air Hotel with my grandmother. Most kids don't like that kind of stuff. You know, I like to sit there and listen to music with her. We'd listen to the piano player. That was kind of when we had a very unique relationship. You know, my grandmother ran the show. What do you think of my jacket? I don't like that jacket. I don't know what that is, where you have to have your stomach hanging out. It's a My Les Miserables jacket. It is Les Miserables, that's for sure. Forget about it. Send it back. Send it back, I can't. Okay. Get a return on that. Just wear something where you cover up your stomach. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's a hor horrendous thing. Well, thank you. All right, so I say goodnight. Bye-bye. Kiss the ring. Since we were like, you know, essentially best friends, um, we traveled the world together. We went to probably 70 countries together. So, you know, in every trip that we took, I would always remember she'd say, you know, if we went to Paris, she'd say, this is not a shopping trip. This is an educational trip. You know, she'd go, shopping you can do in Beverly Hills, but you can't go see historical sites like this. And so she was always wanting to educate me. That was really her more important, that, that was probably her purpose. So I really had a, I was a very lucky because most kids don't get to do these kind of things. Very few actually. Growing up, you know, you hear stories all the time when she's in the car with you and her sister, or when you're at home at the dinner table with her, you know, you're just, it, you're always hearing stories and educational stories and things that stick with you. I have to tell you something which I never told anybody. What? what? You asked me once if I shot or if I used a gun. And I said to you, yes. What do you mean? Who did you kill? Josh, I'm not going to tell you who I killed, but I killed. A Nazi? Of course. You so, shot a Nazi? I shot, Self defense. Of I course. shot somebody that shot others that I, they had no reason to shoot them. I was hiding behind the bushes to see till they were set up. And when they were completely set up and ready, bim, 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 that's it. And then they died. Were you by yourself? Always by yourself, the best way. And don't open your big mouth. Where'd you get the gun? The Germans gave me a gun. What do you mean, where is the gun? I was part of the underground forces. I know. When this thing started, I went on my bicycle and I made a vow right then and there. What I'm going to do. You or me, right? No, who is going to come first? You That's or somebody right. else? No, you, know. you have to be dangerous. Dangerous. A very dangerous. Don't mess with me. Absolutely. No, very dangerous person. Sometimes I find myself talking and um, I'm like, what did I just say? I, 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 will, I will almost uh, say something that doesn't even sound like English. It's like a combination of Romanian, German, French, her shtick. Like I, I've kind of become her, which is bizarre. I'm a little taller, but my grandmother was very blunt. One time I think a, a golfer said to her, where's Romania? And she goes, get a globe. Just whatever came out of her head, she spoke. The clothes today, it's always the tits. Excuse me? The tits. When a woman wants to get dressed, she doesn't cover herself completely. The tits have to come out someplace. What are you talking about? But she was the nicest person. She'd go to Hillcrest Country Club. I'd say, what are you doing today? She's going, I'm going to have lunch. I go, who are you having lunch with? She goes, the waiters. I go, what do you mean? She goes, well, I don't really like the people at the club. So I just, you know, I brought them some Romanian eggplant. We sat in the kitchen. We talked. I cooked a little bit with them. That's how my grandmother was. What a, I just wish that I turned out that way. But we can, you know, sometimes you skip a generation. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm getting messages from her. I don't believe in spirits and this and that or whatever, but everywhere I go, I, it's like she was talking to me. Like, you know, we have a document that we found in the vault upstairs. She left messages to me after she died. Like, this is, I'm, I've looked at this document. I was in the vault upstairs. We opened up documents that she donated to the museum. And the first line, it says, Joshua, this is an oral history of your family for you. I never even saw this before. And it's in the Holocaust Museum upstairs, which is very cool. So I'm lucky that I have a pretty large platform to spread Holocaust awareness. What do I mean by that? I've been fortunate enough to have a show on television. What I try to bring though to that show is elements outside of real estate, which is what I do. I try to bring awareness to other things even such as the Holocaust. What do I mean? My grandmother was alive and was a regular on that television show. And what we loved and what America or any country in the world that watched that show loved, the, their favorite thing was always my grandmother. I'm actually listing another uh, unit for sale on the 17th floor right across the hall from me. 
Oh, a new floor. Yeah, it's $2 million, it's 1,700 square feet, and it's got a beautiful view. So I'll tell you what, let's go and take a look. What do you think? Very interesting, very artistic. Very nice decor, huh? Well, let me see what I, how those chairs are. Mm. Oh. Do this. You see, you're comfortable. Oh, fantastic, they're big enough, I can sleep in here. You, you probably could sleep in that thing. <laughs> Every day I receive emails, Instagram messages, whatnot, and I would say 50% of them say, we loved your grandma, that's the only reason we watched the show, or we tuned in for this. And obviously, you watch clips of it, you'll see. She was an amazing individual that gave so much knowledge and so much wisdom, but in almost a comedical way. She almost found, like, in everything, she found humor in everything. I'll say things, I'm like, I'm my grandmother, which is something fabulous to uh, be able to say. So, you know, when I was around 14, after having so many stories and everything, I said, this is amazing. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna write a book on this. And over the years, um, it took me like four years to write it because I'm completely anal and a perfectionist. So that was 17 times of editing it over and over and over again until it was perfect. After four years, we published the book, the funds went to charity and Everyone who reads that book, just, it's amazing. I'll get calls today and people say to me, I couldn't put it down. This is a woman who posed as a Red Cross nurse, was Jewish. People thought she was a little boy at the time. She was probably, you know, 17, 18 years old. And she used to swim in, with the Nazis in the morning, overhearing what they were saying. Like, who does that? You know, hiding food in under manure so the dogs couldn't see it on her bicycle. She was pregnant. She left the hospital on a bicycle with her baby. Who does that? So. Um, these stories I'm happy to share with people and I try to keep her legacy going because there's so much to learn from her. I want to show you something that was a very important thing when the Germans, when the Nazis took over Holland and tried to kill all the Jews. And I want to show you something. This is how it, it's in Dutch, Yoda. It's a, that's the sign of, the, of a Jew. It's been that way in the 14th century already. Where did yeah. you have this? Well, they, they were giving it out. I no, should where was it. this? It looks like it's been in a drawer for 10 years. Yeah, it's been for more than 10 years, like uh, 60 years, <laughs> 65 years to be exact. It's incredible. <laughs> I can't believe you still have this. Yeah. You know something? When I got this thing, I was swearing to myself, of course. I never will wear it, and I don't care what happens. I'll fight them. I'll do my best to just do it. But save as many people as I can. I definitely would not have the courage that you had. I, I probably would have been dead if I was living during that time. I wouldn't I don't have survived. Think so. I'll just tell you. I don't think I would have made it. You were made. I, many people made it. Not enough, but some of them made it. And the ones that were caught and went sent to concentration camps never came back. They never came back. <laughs> Judge, what did you put on? That sounds terrible. Thank you. Anyway, let's proceed. Okay. Now, so, coming to something. America. I didn't know much about America. I didn't even know idea what it's going to be like.